Hey folks, Joseph A. Savoy here. I'm here at the screening room at Woodbury University in Burbank, California, just to watch the presentation of A Night of Too Many Shorts that's presented by animator and very talented Danny Bowman. And I just got the DVD, which she just did, called The Namba Zoo. This is voiced by Tom Kenny. The SpongeBob SquarePants, Walker's Bar in Life, and the Powerpuff Girls, and Stella Ritter, happens to be the daughter of actor and comedian John Ritter. Yeah, it's very special right here. So, um, had a good time. I just watched all the shorts that she just did, and they were amazing. I mean, beautiful animation all the way around. Definitely tells a story right there, and it would definitely work as a series. So, <laughs> enjoy the Q&A with Danny and his crew. Um, for the Indiegogo campaign, Jason has an answer. Yeah, we're um, and we're we're shooting big because there's, we're we're looking not just for the animation itself. We're looking for you know afterwards going to film festivals, and we want to pay the musicians, the uh, voiceover artists, everybody. So we're looking at we're trying to go for fifty thousand. Oh, wow. Wow. Is it already up and running? Yeah, it's up and running right now. If you go on how Indiegogo you right at, now, how, how far are you? How well, it's three days up, and we've got almost fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be up for two months on Indiegogo, and then, but it can, you can still donate after. It's something they do. They just have like the two-month time, but then okay. you can still donate after. But yeah, if you just go uh, look up Chloe and Orphan Story okay. and uh, Spectrum Laboratory, and it will pop up on Indiegogo. I can put some money in, right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sell these <laughs> <laughs> Facebook through social media. It's simple. Social media, right? 
you also have a great team around you. That's yeah. just your team. Mm -hmm. who, yes. who are your Who are the people that you uh, that, that guide you? That guides me? Well, that's mostly in senior Noble Patrick that guides me, and that they includes you. Stand up. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. It's amazing in the animation community. It's it's the, it's a very warm, embracing community, and uh, just you know, Kevin had a contact with uh, with Tom Kenny, and he was working on another project. And said, hey, by the way, can we tag on to the end of this voiceover session? And Tom's like, sure. Okay, so why don't you try to explain about the development and then the Mazu? Yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, Tom Tom Kenny is is just an amazing guy. I mean, he's a man of a thousand voices. Everybody's heard him, but. For him to jump in on this was just something really special. I just, uh, I didn't know he was actually going to be just such an integral part of this. And he did a lot of the uh, characterizations as far as also kind of commenting on what would work and what wouldn't work. You know, it's uh, it just brought my story to life. Uh, the idea was that uh, Danny, you had that bullying campaign at that time, and yeah. this was sort of complementary to it to have this this fish that would sneeze every time people would be mean to each other. This was right after. <laughs> so people just had a very favorable response to this. They just thought it was just such a cute idea. And we showed it at Comic-Con at the Children's Film Festival. It was just well, very well received. And it was just a pleasure working with Danny. And that's, people do get involved. You're like a magnet, Danny. Yeah, thank you so much. Involved. Everybody <laughs> just always wants to get involved with her because she has such positive energy. Yeah. So, any, what's up, Evan? No, I'm just doing this. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny, I was, I was curious if you could talk a bit about your production process for making animated short, and also if there's any part of the process that you like especially. Um, the really, well, the process is very, very straightforward, I say so, David. Well, it, start, it begins with a little bit of concept and ideas when it comes to brainstorm, right? Brainstorming is when it comes to the idea. It goes through an abstract thought. thought. Then the abstract thought just comes up with an idea of a, writing a screenplay. You take the ideas of exposition, conflict, and resolution. You put all of these three elements, you put them into a screenplay, and you start building it up over time, right? And once a screenplay writer has finished writing the script, the first the director or the producer would approve or disapprove whether the screenplay writer to rewrite again and again. Process, right? And once the until it's nicely satisfied. For for voice acting. We got the script ready, and we have them read the scripts, right? Yep. How do you like the experience of doing Voice of Plus? We did table reads. Well, we, we know what I, um, yeah, I think it's a weird idea. I think it's a weird idea to actually do, do a, a table read over Skype. Yeah. It's kind of weird at first, but it's new technology when it comes to Skype. I was pl planning to make Daily Nation Entertainment to be online and offline, unlike the major animation studies you know, like Disney or Warner Brothers. But let's continue the process. Then, the creative artist does the storyboards, typically starts with the beat boards and gets approval and gets some edits from the supervisors and the writers. Just, I gave Justin Connors some edits when he worked on Hannah Lost Her Smile. And with the edits, he has knows how to do lots of editing, lots and he's done the character design. And once the animation is finished, they add a little bit of sub skeleton, which is called an animatic. And after the animatic is done, you, the people, the creative artists who've done the backgrounds, the, char the character design, the animation, and adding voice actors is all put together in production. And once the animation sequences are done, they add sound effects, they edit, they edit everything in an editorial, in a post-production, audio mixing. Once the audio mixing and all the sounds are just adjusted to make a perfect animation, you get a perfect, you get to make a very good animated short. As long as the story is good. Mm -hmm. you no know, matter what, after the process is finished with showing the film, they could either get a hit or miss, flop, hit or miss, <laughs> box office success or a flop. Uh -oh. Good review, bad review, you name it. And then the process goes on. Right. <laughs> I do love the creative story and how I animate the characters, and I keep watching my animated shorts again and again. I'd like to see that for my own. <laughs> it's, it's my, and if I do the animation shorts, I claim it. <laughs> I have to go, but I want to say one thing. 
I was the first one that hired you. Fourteen years old, and I am so so proud of you. Joy, so that's not the art style I want. She's like, I don't want to do it. 
at 14, right? Not kids with autism. So. And so it was a big process to get her beyond that. And actually, you know, the book is very, very successful. But so you always have that judgment call you've got to make in terms of how much structure versus how much creativity. And you just play that by by ear as as you work with her. And just don't make it work for what it is done. And give her enough that fundamental that enough that how to do it. Yeah. Any questions, Joanne? I do have a well, first I want to say thank you and it was lovely to see the progression of your creativity. Oh, uh, no problem. And also I wanted to tell everybody no problem. <laughs> I wanted to let everyone know, you know, I produced a, a documentary that you're in, Generation A, Portraits of Autism in the Arts. Mm -hmm. And the next one is called Normal People Scare Me Too. I know, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. But that's Carrie Bauer's film. The, my film with Danny is going to be on PBS in the fall. Wow. So I wanted to let everyone know, and Noah Schneider is also one of the portraits. But I also wanted to say, Danny, in that documentary you talk, it's, we, we shot your segment five years ago. That's great. And you talk about it being a five-year plan. I don't know if you remember that. Sandy's in it yes. and Patrick's in it. And I see that it says five, it's a five-year anniversary for you for, uh, for Power Life Studio. So congratulations. Thank you so much. You've done a tremendous job. Um, other than anime, I just typically pick up all the types of influences from Nintendo, mostly Nintendo games and Sega. Plus, um, I got influences from Tamagotchi, which is like mm -hmm. the top, it's a virtual pet. And I've got some influences from animes like Axis Cars Italia is one of my influences. <laughs> Plus, um, there's I also got a little bit of Western influences like. Um, I got a little bit of inspiration from John K. Grant and Stimpy. You saw that scene from the Mazu where Iggy had that all bulging eyeballs thing, which is inspired by a scene from Ren and Stimpy. Nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Which are some of your favorite artists? Each and every day. I was kind of pretty much inspired by John Belusi's art was pretty good, and also many of anime artists. Um, I also like um, Craig McCracken, I like Lauren Faust. You know Lauren Faust? The co developer she's the developer of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I met her in person and she's like really nice, right? And also I get to meet Matt Groening. Oh. Matt Groening, yeah. If I could also get into the daughter that wants to schedule on too. And everything since you don't like sketching, one thing to keep in common as an artist. Keep your mistakes, because in the beginning and in the end, the mistakes will help you create your own style and stuff too. Especially when you're sketching around, you may not like, like the mistake in the end. Mm -hmm. It's also a good thing too that to study anatomy and most mm -hmm. studies as well and drawing as well. Too. In other words, if this if Simpsons did not exist, Gravity Falls won't. <laughs> <laughs> or any other show. Because the big eyeballs of The Simpsons inspired the creator to create Gravity Falls. Mm -hmm. Alongside with Sanjay and Craig, Bob's Burgers, mm -hmm. <laughs> all these, yeah. you see? That's why it's called an animation inspiration chain. Art, good, bad artists copy, good artists steal. <laughs> good artists steal? <laughs> <laughs> I also have a wonderful idea to add you as well. When it comes to the story plot, if you had an idea of a project, such as a story that you want to create as well, Keep with that idea, because then, if anything else in the future, if you change around that story idea, that story may come up to you again, and that you may like it as well. Yeah. I'd like to add to that. Collaboration is very important, too. Mm -hmm. Just even classmates, but just people through the internet also have ideas and things that sort of drive you that you love to do. If you love to do it, it'll, it'll, you'll just keep doing it. Yeah, you'll, you'll just keep drawing. And saving your mistakes, yeah, absolutely. Walt Disney used to take things out of the garbage flatten them out and save them. So even he was conscious of that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I would go back to just to add on the, co the collaboration. Yanni yeah, has done her own music. She's written her own script. She's done her own animation. But she grows as, grows as much when she's working with other people on projects. Mm -hmm. And so the collaboration and the mentoring component for artists is huge. And I think it's very important for for kids to, to, to work as a project, they, they get, there's a feedback loop with, uh, 
working with other individuals. And that process is huge from a, from a, from a growth standpoint, creatively, artistically, really functionally be able to, to, to deliver a product because you can, uh, one person can do an animated short. I mean, Danny's done them. Namazu Numa, was, was done in 12 days. Okay. Well, yeah, yes, it was done in 12 days. Board, board review with Dory and was on the 29th of, of, of uh, no, sorry, the 25th of June. And we, we screened it at Comic Con seven, eight, nine, eight, 12 days later from boards. Yeah. It, but that's because, but that's that obsess, obsessed component of it. That's probably not the best work because it was very, very focused, and it was done in a pretty compressed time frame. We had the voiceovers done in in, May, in March, but we couldn't get to it because Danny had school, so she didn't really start in earnest on that project until early June, and we already had a commitment to show it at Comic Con, so it was a very compressed schedule. But my point being is, the collaboration makes a big difference in terms of my life. Anybody else have any more questions? I have one question. Um, in your first film, I don't, I don't remember what it was called. Yes, yeah, story. Was there any significance to the characters not having a mouth? Um, is there any significance of the characters not having a mouth? Well, it depends on the character, right? Some characters who don't really have a mouth just have a potential. Think of the radio from the brave little to the brave little toaster. He's able to talk, but he does not need a mouth. And then she was also just 14, that was the first one that she ever did. <laughs> mm. So she was just beginning to learn how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, and that's film also because the, the script had an autism awesome focus. Um, that was like part of, I don't think I don't think it was necessarily intentional, but I think that kind of, that subconscious creative component, it, I think it doubled up and really came out of that. Um, same thing with the mask. You, you'll see the mask. Um, and then the other thing I always find funny about that movie is all the characters. Like, it starts out rough at first, but then as I started working on my animated shorts, it becomes better over time. As you're going through this, uh, it, it's Ea's story started out like an industrial robot in the uncanny, according to the uncanny bound. But then, as you go up to somebody who needs you, it just goes better visually. Perfect, right? Okay. The characters feel more alive. Danny, she's got a So first of all, congratulations, Danny, on quite a body of work. So what I want to know is what's your next five years? My next five years? <laughs> After we finish in Chloe and Orphan Story, I'll still be continually working on my animated shorts, including student film shorts in Whipler University. So you had an original five-year plan, which was global domination. <laughs> <laughs> Animation studio. Start out small like Disney and work. Do you see yourself working on any animated feature films in the future? I would do, yeah. And especially like television series. And I was, I thought about, uh, sometimes I just think about um, bringing back traditional animation, traditional animated films, since there's a decline in traditional mm -hmm. animation, sadly. Because the animation is. The animation industry is now dominated by CG animated films. Well, that's because it's inside the American industry. Outside of the American industry, the traditional animation is still considered highly as well, such as the Japanese, Chinese, and especially French animated films as well. But in America, we are so sad that it's CG animation took over America. That's because, unfortunately, for big, higher cooperations, it's considered a much more massive thing. I agree with you, though. Mm -hmm. Traditional animation doesn't even bring back into a standpoint view. And I believe traditional animation could rise up higher as well as that CG animation. I love all forms of animation, but at the same time, I've seen some updates. It's also the problem, the reason why it's the box office box. Mm -hmm. You can have a CG animated film that had a box office, that has box office box. Look at Hood Wing 2, Hood vs. Evil. It had a box office box. And the worst one was Mars Needs Moms had a box office block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Legend of Oz. Is computer graphics. In other words, 3D animation. Uh, in other words, um, three. It's also another reason why is because the CG animated features trying to keep up with the 3D glasses uh, for market. Keeping up with the 3D glasses market. Uh, 
I'm curious, uh, looking back on your films, some of your earlier films especially, they're all uh, really charming and, and incredible in their own way, but is, is there anything you might look back on now and, and think maybe you should do differently if you're going to go back and change anything? If I could go back and change it, I don't think maybe I could change it the sounds of editing because some of the sounds come out from our errors. But as I work in the animation studio, there's less errors than the, uh, the previous ones I've ES story has the most Somebody needs you has less errors. There's mistakes to fix, right? But would you want to redo any of them over again? Maybe I could redo the story. Anybody else? Anybody else? Um, any other questions? Questions for the panel. What's your thoughts about the upcoming project and how is that? going to help you evolve professionally. Oh, you mean, you mean uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so the thing about Chloe is that, um, so, uh, you know, you're going to give me a, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're going to be a, get a lot of animation, ta animation taught to us in there. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I gotta say, it'll, it'll be, like, pretty cool. And, and, and also, I, um, I, I would, I repeat, uh, I, 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 would, I would completely love to, to do, do like a voice in there. <laughs> Good. How's your French? What? How's your French? Yeah. How is my French? Yeah. <laughs> 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 How's my Italian? <laughs>
and I, and um and when it says we, when I was about thirteen, when I was about thirteen, I'm, oh, was, my, we were watching the film of the opera on 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 this mm -hmm. television, and and I was starting to sing, mm -hmm. and um oh. and uh, and my mom thought I was like, oh my God, that's a, that's really great, of Jim. <laughs> 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 Bye.